Hi you guys! My name is Melanie and I work for the Virginia Institute of Marine Science in the Fisheries Department for the Multi-Species Research Group. Like so many of you, I am currently working from home and practicing social distancing. So Vims thought it would be fun to do a segment called Science at My Kitchen Table. This is what our kitchen table looks like right now. Thankfully, we have two tables because I'm taking up a lot of room with all this equipment. I am currently using this equipment to cut otoliths. An otolith is a fish ear bone, and ear bones on fish can be used to see how old the fish is. So what we do is use this low speed saw, and we take a section out of the otoliths, which are mounted on these little squares, and then we will put them on a slide, and we will sand them. And when we sand them down, we are able to see how old the fish is by counting the rings on it, just like you would the rings on a tree. Pretty cool, huh? The first thing I'm going to do is remove the otolith from the bag. As you can see, it is pretty small. This is my nail next to it. So one cool thing about otoliths is they are all kind of different shapes and sizes depending on the species of fish. So we are actually able to ID some of the stomach contents that we get just by knowing what otoliths look like. I think that's one of the coolest parts of our job. So what I'm going to do is mount this to this square and then we're going to put it in the saw. We use a product called Crystal Bond to mount the otoliths to these cutting squares. This is what the tube looks like that we get. We actually have to keep it refrigerated for the most part because it has a pretty low melting point. And so what I'm going to do now is put the otolith directly into the crystal bond. This is sort of hard to do one-handed, so please excuse me. This is a pretty cool view for you guys. This is what I see when I'm trying to get it lined up properly under my microscope. The goal here is to have the core of the otolith line up with one of these dark black lines. If we line our saw blades up properly, that means that we are going to get the best cut possible and we will have the most consistent ages together when we are reading them. Okay, now I'm going to insert the sample into the saw and I'm going to work on lining up the saw blade with the lines on this sample paper. So now it's lined up pretty well and we're going to start cutting our otolith. And you can start to hear a difference in it. That's when you can tell that it's cut all the way through. We're gonna hit stop. So now I've labeled the slide number 292. I'm gonna put it up on our hot plate. And we are gonna add a dab of crystal bond. And now we have to release this from the crystal bond. So sometimes they'll pop off themselves if it's a section, but because I cut this one directly in half, it's not gonna do that. And they're very fragile and I don't want it to break. So I'm gonna heat it back up and then carefully take these sections off and mount them directly on here. The flat edge that was cut will go down and that's what we will sand to. The part that we want the most is the section that is the slice in the center there. So we will be sanding down to the best part there. So this is what they look like when they're mounted on the slide. They are standing up vertically. They are sticking straight up off the slide and we are going to be sanding down towards what you see on the back here. So now we're ready to sand our otolith. We use a 320 grit sandpaper that I stick to this tray. I'm going to water it down, which is tap water. We use suction cups on the back of our slide to hold it. And now we're going to start the sand. And as you can see, it's starting to flatten out. Now we're going to dry our slide with a paper towel. 
I'm going to show you guys what it looks like so far. Again, you can see now that it's completely flat. Let's see if we can line it up. And that's what it looks like. So you're starting to see the light come through the otolith now. So that is good. So I think we're good on the sanding part. The final step is to put our otolith back on to the hot plate. And now we are going to use crystal bond and we're going to cover the otolith up to protect the, the surface of them. And this is what the final product looks like. So this otolith is from a different fish, but I think you can see here more clearly that there are two lines running through these otoliths. So that means that this fish would be a two-year-old window pane. These otoliths will be read by three independent readers. We will all assign what age we think it is. And then once we go through, if two out of three agree, that is the age that the fish will be assigned. We store our completed otoliths in slide boxes. We have tons and tons and tons of these from over the years. We've been collecting otoliths and aging fish since 2002 for our Chesmap survey, which is our Chesapeake Bay trawl survey, and since 2008 for our NEMAP survey, which is our nearshore Atlantic survey, which is from Cape Hatteras to Martha's Vineyard. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you guys are doing your best to be safe and you're socially distancing yourself during this time. If you guys have any questions about what we did today, please feel free to comment and let us know and I'll do my best to get back with you as soon as possible. Stay safe, you guys. Have a great day.